Do you ever get those hard crystallized balls of oil underneath your skin? You pull your skin tight and you can see them right there. Or sometimes you don't even have to pull them tight. They're just there. And try as you may, you cannot get them out. Stay tuned. I'm going to give you a few ways to handle them. Welcome back. So Melia can be super annoying and people have been asking me questions about how to get rid of them. And basically what happens is Melia form when there's an imbalance of water in the epidermis. Any oil that's trying to get out is just absolutely squeezed and <laughs> has nowhere to go. So it just gets stuck. Over time that will lose moisture and it forms like this hard ball. Amelia are genetic and they can also be from products. A lot of people are wearing oils as part of their skincare routine and what happens is oil is not water. I mean, it feels hydrating, but it is not water. There's either oil or there's water. And so thank goodness everybody knows about a hyaluronic acid because that is an easy fix. You need to put on a layer of hydration to trap that in. And with most of my acne clients, this is a crucial step because they're doing so much to exfoliate and keep their follicles clear that they tend to get dehydrated and dehydration causes melia. Not in everybody, but causes in a lot of people. So what I recommend is just a layer of hydration before you put on your moisturizer to seal it all in. The Koreans, they know this because they're basically all about hydration and keeping their acid mantle in place. But these can form even if you are doing these right things. So what do we do to get rid of them? Well, first of all, I would seek out an esthetician who specializes in removing melia because not all of us do. And I can tell you that melia scared the bejesus out of me when I first became an esthetician. There are actually some states where you can't even use lancets. And let me show you that. So this is a lancet and it, this is the kind of lancet you can buy like at Walmart. In a pinch this can help but this I stay steer clear of these. I tend to like a hypodermic needle that has a little scoop on the end and I would not recommend doing this to yourself because what happens is it starts to bleed and it kind of hurts and you just go a little nuts and you can't get it out anyway. And that's been my experience on myself. I can remove these on clients. I can remove Melia on clients' eyelids, anywhere on the face. I can remove them without a second thought. And I guess, cause I'm not being, being hurt, you know? <laughs> but if you do it right, it doesn't hurt too much. It's basically just a flick. There is an esthetician in Spain. Her name is Josefa Reina and she has an excellent technique on this where you can learn how to remove melia with this now like i said me being an esthetician i can't even do this to myself because what happens i mean it kind of maybe if i open it up and use a comedone extractor i can do it but what happens is it starts to get bloody and i just i can't even get them out because i I just create a mess on my own face. <laughs> so I'm like, I just go to an esthetician here in the area and she just pops them right out when I get them. I don't get very many, but this is comes with the territory when you're wearing makeup and doing lots of different products. I think Melia are just a beast sometimes. And it's funny, when I was in Miami and I first started seeing a lot of Melia, they were clients who actually wrote on their consultation sheet that they actually do recreational drugs and through talking with them it's not a lot they they were doing cocaine so anything that speeds up the body and dehydrates the body in general is going to be a trigger for melia on the face and not always just in those who have genetics for it so I just thought that was really interesting. There's also what's called solar comedones, which are slightly different. They're usually blackheads that form along this area, although I've seen whiteheads in this area as well, and melia, which is basically, people would call them whiteheads, but they're buried underneath so much layers of dead cells that they're just virtually impossible to get out, especially if you have a comedone extractor. They're just not going anywhere unless you open up that skin. And so, like I said, I would look for an esthetician who's really good at this, 
and it will be the quickest, easiest, most painless, <laughs> most most tender way of getting them out because you start to open up your skin and it's just a mess. So let me show you some products. And it, you know, it's funny because dermatologists, the first thing they say is, let's get you on Retin-A. And while that's fine, for me, it sort of exacerbates the problem. And my acne clients, I've seen how much they suffer with dryness and those that are on vitamin A products. It's a constant battle to keep them hydrated enough so that they're not forming these melia. I find that interesting that that's the first place they go. And I remember I once had a client, she was in her 70s, and she had so many melia. Oh my God, she had a pencil eraser sized melia on her forehead. And I thought I wanted to cry. I got them out, but I just wanted to cry because it was, I mean, it wasn't an easy treatment to do to her and it took a long time. So, but she had gone to her dermatologist and her dermatologist told her to go on all oil-free products. Well, what does the skin do if you deprive it of oil? <laughs> it produces more oil. So, and it also does that when it feels dehydrated. So oil, if it's, if it's oil starved or water starved it's going to produce more oil it's a defense mechanism of the skin so some things you can do on a daily basis to help keep from getting melia would be to add a layer of hydration into your routine and i would have it be if you're using neogenesis recovery or anything that's very water-based i would have that be first and then let that sink in and then I would do a layer of something like the moisturizing mist. This is really nice. It has the stem cell releasing molecules from the human stem cells, from adult human stem cell donors. But it's also got sodium PCA and sodium hyaluronate, plus antioxidants to keep the skin nicely conditioned. You can even use this to set your makeup if you like a really dewy makeup set. So this is made to be used in one of two ways. You can either spray it on after your serums and pat it in and then put on your moisturizer and SPF and or you can just spray this on throughout the day as needed. This is also wonderful if you suffer from rosacea. I have a client who was telling me the second she gets out of her shower and her face is just her cheeks are on fire she'll just give this a few little sprays and her cheeks calm right down. So rosacea suffers rejoice because this is a, such a great product if you have rosacea. Also, it's relatively inexpensive at $30 for 120 ml or four ounces. So you're able to experience the stem cell releasing molecules, which is what Neogenesis is so good at, and get your hydration all in one. I would add in just a gel-based hydrating mask once or twice a week. Just for kicks, you know, give, give your skin that drink of water it is longing for. Because moreover, I see dehydrated skin, I see melia, and this is just chronic. And it's, it's interesting, I'm kind of excited because as Korean skincare infiltrates American culture, it's wonderful because they're all about preserve and hydrate, right? It's all about hydrate, 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 layers, layers, layers. And so they know the benefits of adding layers of hydration into our routine. And that's a nice concept because if you've been hydrating your skin since you were 12 on a regular basis with 17 steps, your skin's gonna look pretty darn good. But we do need to hydrate and it's a great lesson to learn from the Koreans. But any hyaluronic acid serum is gonna give your skin that much needed drink of water and help keep those melia at bay. Thanks for watching.